JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for July the 23rd. I am Harlambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar continued trading lower against uh, the majority of the other G10 currencies on Wednesday during the Asian morning Thursday. It lost the most ground against the Kiwi, the Swiss franc and the Euro, while it gained only versus NOC and JPY. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against the uh, SEC. The weakening of the dollar and the yen combined with the strengthening of the Kiwi suggests uh, that market sentiment remains supported for another day. However, the fact that the Swiss franc was among the main gainers points otherwise. Thus, in order to clear things up, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, major EU indices traded in negative territory, but the US ones managed to close positive. The negative sentiment returned during the Asian session today. Although Hong Kong's Hang Seng gained 0.68%, China's Shanghai Composite and South Korea's KOSPI are down 0.47 and 0.54% respectively. Japanese markets were closed due to the Marine Day holiday. What forced investors to reduce the, their risk exposure during the EU session may have been new tensions between the US and China. The US gave China until tomorrow to close its consulate in Houston amid accusations of spying while according to sources, China is considering uh, retaliating by closing the US consulate in Wuhan. Investors' morale improved somewhat during the, during the US session, perhaps due to reports saying that the US government is willing to pay nearly 2 billion US dollars for 100 million doses of the vaccine developed by Pfizer and, Bi and BioNTech, if it proves to be safe and effective. In any case, fears over the US-China relationship returned during the Asian trading with uh, the new record uh, in daily coronavirus cases around the globe adding, as, adding extra pressure. In our view, news and headlines suggesting progress in the, in the development of a potential vaccine combined with data suggesting that uh, the adopted monetary and fiscal stimulus is having the desired effect are keeping the overall recovery in equity markets intact. However, the tensions between the world's uh, two largest economies and the fact that infections from the coronavirus are still in acceleration mode are resulting in downside corrections. Although we see the case for risk-linked assets to rebound again soon and continue trending north, the big question is for how long can this pattern, can this pattern continue? In other words, for how long can the bulls hold on to the driver's seat? If the US-China tensions continue to escalate and the virus continues to spread fast, investors may eventually decide to abandon equities and other risky assets on fears of a fresh economic downturn. Now, as for today's events, as every Thursday, we get the US initial jobless claims for last week. The forecast suggests uh, that another 1.3 million people signed for unemployment benefits, the same number as the week before. <clears throat> With a slowdown in claims showing signs of a halt, this may raise concerns over the pace of the economic recovery in the US. That said, with less than two weeks to go before the extended unemployment aid for millions of Americans expires, this week, the main development in the US may be the debate in Congress over a new coronavirus aid bill. As we noted yesterday, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said on Tuesday that the one trillion US dollars package proposed by the Republicans is not sufficient and thus it may need a final decision above that number to refuel the latest rally in equities. Tonight, during the Asian Morning Friday, New Zealand's trade balance for June is coming out, but no forecast is available. 
As for the speakers, we have two on today's agenda, ECB Vice President Luis de Guindos and Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee member Jonathan Haskell. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.